Hi guys, my name is Carrie, and I own Chick Ashby Yarns, which you see behind me. Um, and I have been coloring yarn, I guess now for about two years. Prior to that, I was making nail polish, which I um, thoroughly loved, but at some point it got to where it wasn't much fun anymore. Uh, there was a lot of just bickering and complaining and cattiness and I wasn't enjoying it. You know, you see somebody go on attack and all you can do is hope you hold your breath and hope that it's not you next. And that wasn't, I wasn't very much fun. So I kind of took a, a sabbatical from coloring uh, nail polish or making nail polish and started coloring yarn. And I have had a blast at that. And now I am coming back and incorporating nail polish again. Um, so that is something that I think will go great hand in hand in that um, I'll be able to create colors that complement each other. So nail polish that complements the yarn and yarn that complements the nail polish. And I think it's a great uh, combination of talents and abilities. I am um, located in Cedar Hill, that is uh, 30 minutes south of Dallas, Texas, and uh, shop hours are Monday 2 to 8, Tuesdays 2 to 8, which Tuesdays is also our knit night. We're going to be doing it via Facebook Live. I've never done that before, so that might be quite the... Um, maybe exciting experience, I'm not really sure. <laughs> Um, Wednesdays 2 to 8, Thursdays 2 to 5, and Fridays 2 to 5, then Sundays 1 to 5. Um, and I am on the second floor of the Cheeky Cactus building in Cedar Hill, Texas. Uh, if you're looking for places to eat near here, uh, Sam's Pasta and Pizza, really great place. The guys that work there are just as yummy as the food. So if you're coming down to see me, be sure and go see them as well. <laughs> um, and then, uh, what else? Um, we do teach free classes. We have a classroom. It's right across the hall. And uh, Amy, who is the primary teacher, is in Hawaii this week. So next week we're gonna have to get her to tell us about her trip. That's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, but I also teach classes. So knitting is not my only hobby. I also paint and do stained glass and do cross stitch and I've dabbled in finger weaving. Um, but we also have uh, a person who's gonna come in and teach nail binding which I've never heard of prior to her. Uh, apparently it was the original form of knitting and it was created to um, by fishermen, I think, so that if anything happened or the yarn got cut, the, the yarn, the netting got cut or frayed, it would not unwind, it would not unravel. Um, so I'm looking a lot forward to uh, learning how to do that, always up for learning new stuff. You can never know too much stuff. It's just so much fun to learn. Um, I do a lot of DIY stuff. Uh, I build bookshelves. <laughs> I built a six foot by four foot bookshelf for my mother. She called me two weeks later and wanted another one. I was like, good gosh, woman, how many books do you have? Um, so I've built a lot of bookshelves for my mom over the years. Um, I wouldn't say they're professional by any means because I'm not great at, I'm not a finished carpenter. Let's put it that way. I can get the job done and it does hold books. Um, but you can tell that there was no master craftsman that did it. Um, so what else is going on? All right, so um, one day a week, Amy and I are going to try to find a place locally where we can go and sit and knit. Uh, it'll probably be in the morning before 2 because the shop does open at 2. Um, and we're going to announce on the website and probably on Facebook where that will be in case you want to join us. Now, uh, we're not real good <laughs> 
at heads up. So it might be five minutes before we show up and it might be we get there and there's no place to sit and we're like, oops, we're going someplace else. Um, not yet that structured yet because we're just starting it. So I'm sure that there will be some kinks to get uh, um, worked out along the way. This, in case you cannot tell, <laughs> is my very first podcast. Um, I'm trying to work on not saying um and ah to fill the silence. My job has been kind of in transcription, like my day job has kind of been in transcription where people, I just listen and take down what they say. Um, so I'm not used to having to hold a conversation, especially a one-sided conversation with myself, imagining that there are other people out there listening to me. That being said, I know I will accidentally say ah and um more than I need to, and I am working on it. So There'll be some times when I do say it, but I beg your apologies while I get that fixed. Also, I don't know how to edit. So, until I learn that part, there might be a dog bark, or there might be a bell ring, or there might be... I don't really know yet. That's going to be tonight's... Um, see there, I just said it. Um, That's going to be tonight's homework is learning how to uh, edit out uh, <laughs> said it twice now <laughs> edit and splice video also I want to figure out how to put things in the corner that I want to share with you guys um, speaking of the corner this shawl right up there is a lily pad design i love everything she does she's phenomenal in what she does she's really good at making it clear and understandable i love that her designs do not have center spines i love that they are symmetrical and uh that being said if you use stitch markers you might lose your mind because <laughs> the stitch markers might jump and be three stitches different on one row than two stitches back on the next row and then five stitches ahead on the next row. So her designs are written so it's really easy to read your, your knitting. And it's really intuitive. Um, if you follow charts at all, her stuff is just a breeze. I mean, I've taken it to the hospital and knit while at the hospital. So it's not anything that uh, should be daunting. If you have not tried lace, I urge you to do our emergency knit kit. And that is the Circle of Love doily. It's available on the website, chickashby.net. It will be going away probably at the end of March, not to return. That is the pattern that my uh, business partner, Amy, wrote. She designed it herself, and test it was test knitted and tech edited, and the kit comes with the pattern and the yarn, and the yarn is rose scented. So it's um, decanted, I guess, diffused, I'm not, not sure of the word, but the yarn does smell absolutely delicious. So be sure you, you get in on that offer before the end of March because it's going to go away. We also have some other emergency knit kits that are perfect for... The reason for this is because I keep running to the store to do something and then it ends up taking a lot longer. And I end up going, oh, dang it, I wish I had something to knit. So I created these emergency knit kits that are just small little projects. They come with the pattern, the yarn, and the bag to keep them in. You just 
put them in your the pouch or the pocket of your door in your car you get out stuck somewhere great you've got knitting the only thing that they do not come with is the needles and that is because everybody has their own favorite needles everybody you know I personally like Chiagu red lace other people like Lycus, which I do sell. Other people like um, Knit Picks. Other people like Bamboo. It's so much a personal choice that I do not put the needles in with the kit. So, if you buy the kit, you will need to put your own needles in there with it. That being said, <laughs> I carry a set of interchangeable needles in my trunk. For that very reason, so that no matter where I am, if I finish one project and have enough yarn left over to do something small, I will have the option to do that if I just run out to my car and grab a new needle. Um, I know that's a little bit excessive, but that's what I do. So <laughs> you might want to consider that as well. Um, what else? Um, why I do this. It is so much fun to be creative and be engaged and um, I have been doing this online for a, a bit but um, I just opened a brick and mortar in September. I was able to get in on it for the yarn crawl and the story about how and why I opened is pretty amazing. Um, so I invited a friend of mine to a uh, knit night that I go to every Thursday and the indie colorist there has a booth in a antique store. And I mentioned to my friend that I would love to do something like that in Cedar Hill thinking a booth. Four days later, I had the keys to the second floor of her shop. And that was kind of overwhelming. I tend to suffer from um, analysis paralysis. Had she given me time to think about it, I probably would not have done that. Um, because I would have been afraid and I would have been thinking about the money it would have taken to start up and where would I get grid walls and how would I display and uh, point of sale systems and as it is I went through all of that stuff and boy was it a lot uh, but I went through all of that stuff kind of after I had already said yes I would do this so at that point I had jumped in feet first so that was in July and I got in just in time to participate in the yarn crawl in September, which was awesome. Uh, it gave me time to amass stock. It gave me time to get stuff colored and uh, ball banded and skeined and uh, really kind of get, you know, like furniture and, and grid walls and all kinds of stuff. So I feel like that was providential because then in early February, I lost my job. And the yarn shop was my corporate escape plan. So uh, I have been looking for a part-time job uh, while I continue to get the yarn shop uh, self-supporting and to that end I will dive in and give you the book that I have been listening to <laughs> this week I'm a big audiobook person um, when I first started my day job it was an hour and a half going and an hour and 45 minutes coming so all said it was uh, three hours and 15 minutes round trip uh, every day on the train. So I would go north a half hour to the closest train station, get on the train, and then ride an hour in 
then coming back I would get on the train and ride an hour but then it would take me 45 minutes to get home and that's just the traffic difference of 530 in the morning versus 530 at night so um, I was complaining about we'll get to that in a minute so I was complaining about how my library did not have any selection um, the local library, and I'm not going to say who they are because, you know, I'm not that kind of person. The local library has 26 pages of books that are available as audiobooks. And I had listened to probably 25 of those pages. And a lot of it included stuff that's really not my cup of tea, but I was like listening to it because I had, you know, three hours and 15 minutes of train time. And so one of my friends, very good friend, uh, who lives in Tennessee, I think she lives in Tennessee, I'm not real sure, um, gave me her login information for her overdrive account. And my first year, somewhere around uh, October or November, I decided to add up how many books I had listened to. Now, disclaimer, I discovered that if I sped them up, I was able to concentrate a lot more to them. I didn't find that my mind wandered as much and I wasn't having to rewind going, what did they say? Uh, nearly as much. So I did speed them up. Uh, so at the end of the year, I decided to add up how many I had listened to and it was really close to being one a day. So I went ahead and challenged myself to make it 365 books for the year. That's an insane number of books to me. Uh, I, I find that pretty impressive and I wasn't um, racing against anyone or anything except for myself. I just wanted to do it for myself. So for the last three years, I have done that. I have made that my goal. Last year, um, you know, life gets in the way, does what it does, and I was 65 books short. No, I, th I was 35 books short. That's what it was. I was 35 books short. And so uh, I decided to just tack that 35 on to this year. Um, and since then, I have decided that I'm going to slow down. I don't want to put that kind of pressure on myself. I don't want to race anybody. If I want to listen to books, I want to listen to books. If I want to watch TV, I want to watch TV. And if I want to do podcasts, I want to do podcasts. I, I am looking to alleviate all sources of stress from my life. And while I do enjoy audiobooks very much and continue to listen to several a week, I don't want to have to kind of look over my shoulder to make sure that I'm listening to the number that I'm supposed that magical number that I'm supposed to be supposed to be attaining. So I have done that. Um, and this week's book, which I've listened to, I think, maybe eight or nine times now. It's called The Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Ecker, E-K-E-R. And I really like it. Each time I listen to it, I catch more. I do listen to it uh, sped up because, again, my mind doesn't seem to wander as much if it's a little bit faster. And in there, he mentions challenge. Did you hear that? That was the dog shaking. His The tags on his collar were rattling around. In that, he mentions uh, challenging yourself to not complain. So, I have taken that challenge. Um, and I mentioned earlier in the podcast that I had, I was complaining to a friend about the library not having much of a selection and kind of giggled as I was thinking about that because really working on my thought processes and I am a very happy bubbly person I always have a tune 
go like a tune in my head. Um, I whistle or hum a lot. And in fact, that's kind of my check-in point of if I notice that I'm not humming, I know to stop and look around and see what's going on. And um, so that was, uh, that was just the personal challenge that I took. And I invite everyone who is listening to this to take that personal challenge as well to not complain. Um, said in a more positive way, because I'm all about uh, the words and, and the power behind them. If I tell you not to think of a pink elephant lumbering across a dusty plain with his yellow friends, it's exactly what you're gonna think of. Your brain doesn't really translate nots, don'ts, couldn'ts, shouldn'ts, wouldn'ts. Uh, so if you say, I'm not going to eat chocolate, your brain hears, I'm going to eat chocolate. Uh, so we need to watch the words that we say and the, the phrases that we use. So instead of challenging yourself to not complain, um, I would prefer that you challenge yourself to... Uh, be kinder, to uh, be more positive, to be more encouraging and supportive. I used to work with a lady who could affirm someone for turning on a light switch. And I always thought, I really want to be like her when I grow up. I mean, that's just an amazing skill to be able to say, wow, you really did a great job turning on that light switch and to make it sound sincere and honest and not like you're patronizing them. So... I feel like I'm getting really deep for my very first podcast. Um, so, uh, on to other things. Um, I covered the book. Okay, so what I've been knitting on this week, and uh, admittedly, there's probably not going to be a lot of change in this because since I have opened a shop, my time that I have for knitting has been so drastically decreased. Um, I, sorry about the dog. He's kind of ready to go home. Um, I have been, um, when I'm at the shop, which is where I'm at right now, uh, I find that I'm spending a lot of time, uh, finding new merchandise to carry, uh, ball banding, skeining, um, pricing, I, you know, started out with barcodes, which I think is a fantastic idea. I love having barcodes. I hate having to come up with what the barcodes are and the numbers uh, and what they mean and all of that. So, um, I wanted to uh, tell you that I am... Uh, or I just finished today, I, I well, I finished it about 3 a.m. last night, or this morning, and uh, then I set it into soak overnight and spun it dry, uh, but I just blocked uh, Eclecticity by Cheryl Faust, and this was a fantastic knit. Uh, I really enjoyed it. At no point did it become a slog. I used one in most of the second skeins of Yak, uh, Chick Ashby Yak in orange, the orange colorway, which looks like rust. And I actually started a tiny one for the shop sample. You can see here, isn't it cute? It's so itty bitty. Um, and it's going to be itty bitty because this is all I have left from my large project. Um, so I just wanted to um, make a shop sample. And uh, Amy and I have kind of been talking about this, about uh, patterns that we love. Huh. There's a green spot on my... <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, but I saw that in the camera, and I was like, ah, oh, I must have gotten my finger when I polished. This one's green, and this one's purple, and I uh, must have gotten my finger in the green polish. So, 
Um, isn't that cute? And I don't know. Oh, you're looking at the back of it. It'd be a lot cuter if you look at the front of it. Okay, so can you see that stitch pattern right there? Um, it's kind of a honeycomb uh, with a five stitch garter edge um, and then some crossovers. And I think maybe I did this row right here wrong. <laughs> That's what life is all about, is realizing on a uh, live podcast. It's not live, but I haven't figured out how to edit yet, so it's gonna you're you're gonna see my mistakes. <laughs> um, that I I did make a mistake. I crossed over. Um, this ends up being uh, not how it should, so I'm gonna rip back to that and fix it. Also on my nails, um, you'll see uh, the Mardi Gras nail polish that I created. Uh, it is uh, a gorgeous green and a lush purple. And then I also have a gold, which I did not... Good grief, the like, cleanup was not very good. Um, which I did not feature uh, on this podcast. I didn't, I didn't put any on my fingers. But um, you'll also notice that the nails on one hand, this hand... <laughs> are shorter than the nails on this hand. And for those not in the nail polish community, this hand, my dominant hand, is called Cindy, and that's short for Cinderella. So the Cinderella hand, the hand that does all the work, gets all the banged up, uh, all the rough skin, all the short, broken nails, etc. But I'm uh, showing both hands just, you know, so you know that, that's how life goes. Um, and so this is the uh, the Mardi Gras nail polish. Let's see if I can get it better in Zoom or however. There you go. Anyway, that's the nail polish that I created for Mardi Gras. And it's available on the website should you want some. Um interests. We already mentioned audiobooks and of course knitting. Of course I'm a big knitter. Um, I also paint. I do stained glass. I make bookshelves for my mom. Um, I love doing DIY stuff around the house. I retiled our bathroom. At some point I want to put in a jutted tub. I think that's probably a project that's bigger than I am. Might need to call in the professionals for that one because I don't know how to do the jets and the wiring and all of that. So probably going to be a professional that does that. Um, pets. I You heard the dog earlier. I have five animals. I have four dogs and a cat. All of them are rescues. I am a big proponent of rescues. Uh, I think with animals dying every day in shelters, there's no reason to buy an animal. Um, I think you have no way of knowing that you're not supporting puppy meals, and I also think that breeding has gotten to be to where you're no longer necessarily getting a good animal. I know there's people that will disagree with me. Uh, as long as we are killing dogs and cats and animals in shelters, um, I, there's just no reason to buy an animal. That's my own personal viewpoint. I realize you may not have that viewpoint. All of my rescues are, all of my animals are shelter, uh, shelter animals. I have three pit bull rescues, uh, and I have, I have an old dog. It's um, a miniature schnauzer, and the shelter said he's about 13. He's a pain in the ass. But he, it really bothers me when people take old animals to shelters and dump them. Like, this animal has given you 13 years of happiness and pleasure and love and affection. And now you're just going to go, oh, well, you're not good enough for me. I'm going to go get a puppy. You don't do that with grandma. Don't do it with your animals. I mean, if you're going to do that, then don't get an animal at all. It's heartbreaking to see the pictures 
I need to get off this soapbox. <laughs> like I said, I feel like it's really deep for my first podcast. You now know how I feel about negative thoughts and about shelter animals. <laughs> so, I, I'm married. I've been married, um, I got married in 2008. So, we are coming up on our anniversary. It's probably going to be slim this year because, like I said, I did just lose my job. So, uh, we're probably going to curl up on the couch and watch some Tot Tort. If you are not familiar with Tot Tort, my husband is learning to speak German. He's really, really fascinated with history and uh, with the wars in general. And so recently he's been trying to understand um, the cause of the war and uh, just the history of it and how it could happen. Uh, the atrocity of it all. Um, so he's fascinated with trying to learn about it. And the things that I've never been interested in history. To me, it's always just been dates and places and faces. And nobody ever really told me the stories about history until my husband did. And he actually told me the stories and it got to be really fascinating. And I loved hearing about that. Uh, and so now he shares with me the things that he's learning, and I really appreciate that um, because now it's actually fascinating now that I don't have to tell you the date something occurred or I don't have to identify which general it was or, you know, whatever. Um, so anyway, Hubby is learning to speak German. And he's become just fanatic about it. So all he watches is German TV. Much like when he was trying to learn Spanish and they told him that he should watch Mexican soap operas. Which he did. And I would come home and there would be this absolutely over-the-top dramatic Mexican soap opera going on and he would go <laughs> just shake his head like he he gives me a hard time over the things that I watch because quite honestly my job was very stressful and I heard you know like the worst of the worst kind of things like oh man you're not gonna believe this but it's a lot of trauma a lot of the time and so when I watch TV I I want to be entertained and he would always go I'm losing IQ points as we speak <laughs> so I would come in and he'd be watching these Mexican soap operas and I'm like pot meat kettle <laughs> There is a lot of drama in Mexican soap operas, and if you can follow it, God bless you. Because <laughs> I was completely and totally lost. Um, yeah, they're like American soap operas times 10. Whatever. Um, admittedly, <laughs> still every once in a while, every three or four years or something, catch up on days of our lives. <laughs> uh, guilty little sin right there. All right, so we've been watching Tot Tart. I say that to say this, that it is really hard to knit and read German subtitles sometimes. So I've been getting much, much better at knitting without looking because we've been watching German TV. And if I want at all to know what's going on, I have to read the subtitles. I am not good at German. Every once in a while, I catch a please, bitte, or, or, or sorry, um, please, which is bitte, or uh, come, which is come Z. Those two I know. <laughs> I do find it interesting that in the TV shows, they don't answer hello. They answer bitte. Like, um, I would never answer the phone please, but that's how they do it. Um, and if I did answer the phone with please, it would probably be sarcastic, like, please, <laughs> you've got to be kidding me. 
So just um, watching the cultural differences has been kind of interesting because I'm fascinated by stuff like that. So uh, back to mindless TV. Uh, I finished up the new episodes of Shit's Creek last night. And just out of curiosity, I was scrolling through and it said, find more like this. So I was looking and I found a show called Kim's Convenience, which I've been really enjoying. It's been kind of interesting to, again, culturally, I find differences in cultures fascinating. So I've been watching that. Um, and happy. Christopher Maloney, who is Stabler off of Law & Order SVU. Quite dark. Definitely not meant for kids. <laughs> Would not, under any circumstances, let my kid watch that show. But, very, very dark. Really funny. Alright, so, yarns. I have been crushing on Merino and Silk. Let me show you. Merino silk. Uh, this is Bora Bora colorway. Um, and I don't know if you can see it, but look at that sheen. You see how shiny that is? That is so soft. And I love knitting with it. It's just amazing to work with. And I'm having so much fun doing so. So that's been my new go-to yarn is I've just been crushing on Merino Silk. Um, so that's my uh, yarn love for right now. Um, incredibly yummy. Loving it. Um, what else? Uh, I covered the animals. You will get to meet all of my animals at some point. Um, I have a white doggy, which is Sammy. He's a paper fiend. That dog, I've never seen a dog eat paper the way Sammy eats paper. He is amazing. And I, I always kind of grew up like, you know, here, oh, my dog ate my homework, whatever. This dog does. He... Fortunately, most times he'll ask, like he'll look at the paper and look at us and whine and look at the paper and look at us and whine and look at the paper and look at us and whine. But I have caught him just helping himself to the stack of mail that we've just brought in and we don't know what's there yet. So, um, <laughs> sorry, the dog ate my bills. I don't know. <laughs> He's terrible about um, the cores that come in toilet paper. You know, the, like the little round rolls. He has gotten to the point where we have to hide the toilet paper because he'll knock it off the holder and eat it. And I'm like, it's not ready yet. That's like this siren call at our house is it's not ready yet. Like, let us use the paper and you can have the, the cardboard uh, roll. So I saw the other day where you can apparently purchase these empty rolls on eBay or I don't know. Um, I'm not real sure why anybody would do that. I guess maybe like craft projects for school or something. I don't know. But anyway, I was like, Sammy, I'm going to have to order you some toilet paper rolls off of, off of the internet because dude, um, we literally, there's, um, a set of built-in shelves above our toilet. So we literally keep the toilet paper up and behind. So that's been fun. <laughs> What else? Uh, Gray Doggy, a skitties. Uh, he is the one in the shop with me right now. He's the shop dog. He thinks everybody that comes is here to see him. He has no qualms whatsoever with anybody. I mean, you could rob our house blind, and as long as you gave him scratches going out the door, you would be all set. He's just... Very badly behaved, but a very loving dog. So we're working on his behavior. We're working on his go lay down. We're working on his feet on the ground, quit jumping. Um, jumping is his big thing, and I'm really trying to figure out how to break it because some sometimes he pogos beside me, which I don't mind. Uh, 
but other times he pogos and knocks whatever is in my hand out. The other day I was carrying the dustpan and he pogoed and knocked dust everywhere and I had to pick it all up again. Kind of annoyed with that. So I'm trying to get him to stop jumping. If anybody's got any tricks, let me know. Um, Bodie. Bodie is the brown doggy. He is a chihuahua in a pit bull's body. <laughs> He's my chicken little. He's a scared of everything, including his shadow. He hates fireworks. He hates thunder. He just shakes for all he's worth. The bedroom door creaks. Bodie's convinced that we have ghosts. When the husband goes to bed before I do, he'll kind of close the door so that the light doesn't shine into the bedroom. And Bodie will crawl up in my lap. He'll just be shivering and shaking for everything. And I'm like, dog, you're going to give yourself a heart attack. Like, you need, you seriously need to take a breath. Like, just calm down. It's okay. Okay, so that's Bodie. Um, then there's Little Dude. Little Dude is the one that I rescued at the age of 13. He drives me bonkers. He loves me. He always wants to be with me, which is fine. He always wants to be up beside me on the couch, which is fine. He pees wherever he wants to pee. And it just aggravates the crap out of me to find pee spots. And I'm like, quit. I'm going to cut it off and I'm going to hang you from the ceiling and I'm going to run you outside on a clothesline and you can pee mid air and I will bring you back in. Like, you cannot pee in this house. It's driving me nuts. And I'm like, I've never given up on a dog. Like there's got to be a reason. So um, I need to, I think I'm going to get him evaluated to see if he's got a urinary infection or something like that that might be causing it. If you guys know of any solutions to jumping or peeing, let me know because he has, I let them out probably four or five times every morning and probably, well, I used to, uh, when I was working from home, but now they do go in the afternoon uh, for a while without being able to go out, but probably four or five times every morning, and uh, little dude doesn't want to go out. He'll just sit and look at me, and I'm like, no, you too. You are going outside, and he gets out there, and he won't get off the porch, and then he comes back inside, and curls up on the couch and then later I find a puddle and I'm like you had the opportunity to go outside that's what aggravates me <laughs> it's not like I'm not letting him outside anyway if you've got any hints tips or tricks let me know I will be glad for that um, the the video shows me that I'm at 43 minutes of 57 minutes so I'm gonna try to quickly finish up um, I can't believe that I'm gonna do this in one shot but if I don't know how to edit video, then you're going to get it in one shot. Um, all right, so uh, people that I may feature. All right, so hubby, which you will most likely never, ever meet. Um, Amy, who is my business partner and uh, designer and tech editor and co-knitter and friend, uh, We'll be here. She's in Hawaii this week. She gets back next week. I'm going to rope her into uh, doing a video and telling me how her trip was. That's going to be fun. because She seems to like videoing me. So we're going to turn the tables on her and I'm going to video her. It's going to be awesome. Um, then there's Kathy, uh, who also is a friend, co-knitter, and um, she comes over and, and colors yarns with me. We have a blast. Um, so me, Kathy, and Amy color yarns. And I have been doing it so long by myself that I've just been enjoying going, okay, you guys have fun, and I'll just record what you do so that we know 
what the colorways are. And um, they have been enjoying being able to just do whatever. And so we've all been learning and having fun and it's, it's a blast. Um, I think that's probably all the people that you might see on this podcast. And if you do, uh, I'll introduce them at that point. It's not really super duper impo uh, important right now. Um, Mardi Gras. Okay, so if you purchase Mardi Gras, you're going to get a free keychain from me. Go now. Just kidding. Um, you will get a free uh, keychain with purchase. And uh, same for yarn. You will get a free keychain with purchase. Just so you know. Uh, mood. Uh, contented. I'm really happy with where life is right now. And I'm really excited with where it's going this year. Um, I feel very positive that things are going to be phenomenal and exciting. And I can't wait to see what the year has in stock. All right. So, um, designs. Heart Doily, as I mentioned, by Amy. It's uh, on the website. You need to get it before March the 1st. Be uh, no, the end of March. Because it will be going away. Uh, a day in the life of. So today I photographed yarn sets. I'm going to be listing those on the website. Um, I redesigned the website. Uh, changed a bunch of things around because I didn't like how it was displaying and the menus and things. Uh, I Finished, as I said, I bound off Eclecticity last night, and I blocked it uh, today. So I should show that you that at the next uh, podcast. Uh, and I am working on a stitch marker subscription set. So that I am super excited about. Cannot wait. It's going to be epic. I'm so excited about that, and I will be uh, sharing the details of that uh, with you once it's ready to go live. Um, drink water uh, for today <laughs> I'm drinking lots and lots and lots of water because I'm trying to get uh, my energy up I'm trying to get my body flushed I'm trying to stay healthy um, it's a time of a lot of sickness and flu around me so I'm just drinking lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of water um, so I think it's come the time to uh, end the podcast. I have uh, roughly 10 minutes left. If you, you know how to edit a video on an Android, or if you know a free software that's really good, uh, if you know of watermark, watermark software that's really good, if you know of lighting kits, tripods, setups, methods, microphones, um, Lighting like 57K, 59K, 61K, 12,000K, <laughs> it's daunting to me at this point. If you know of any hints, tips, or tricks, uh, feel free to toss them my direction. I will take an in all assistance given. Um, I challenge you guys to be positive this week. If you catch yourself complaining, stop and reframe. Uh, everything can be viewed as a learning opportunity. So, including this podcast, because there are problems with it. It is my first. Please be kind. Um, I wish you a really great week. I can't wait for you to meet my animals. I can't wait to show you ele Eclecticity uh, by Cheryl Faust, F-A-U-S-T. It's on Ravelry. I don't know if she has it listed anywhere else. Um, snowflakes in my shop, y'all. Uh, there is a contest of how many snowflakes. Anybody who guesses correctly wins a free skein of yarn. One of the snowflakes is um, playing a tune for us on the fan. <laughs> so... Before I get kicked off, I want you guys to have a great week. Uh, challenge yourself to be more positive. Watch the words you use when you talk to yourself and others. Uh, knit. Knit hard and fast and furious and uh, have fun. Uh, this is going to be a really great... Cade says hi. This is going to be a really great year 
And I'm so excited for you guys to be on this journey with us. You guys have a great, great, great week.